In this video we're going to shift our attention to the view file. We created an empty view file in the last video. It only consists of an anchor pane so far. In order to create the view we have two options. We could either write it directly in XML into the file or we can use the scene builder tool for it. In this course we're going to use the scene builder. So we right click on the view file and open with scene builder. In this video I'm going to briefly introduce you to the scene builder and in the next video we actually build the view. So the scene builder in general is quite intuitive. It should be quite easy to get familiar with it but I'm going to introduce you to the different sections. On the top left hand side we have an area is called the library. The default view of this area should look more like this where all the nodes are displayed in different categories but in my opinion this is a bit difficult to navigate because you have to open each category to actually see what's inside. So if you click on this little wheel and then view as list, you can navigate much easier and you can access all the views at once. You still see the categories in here. The library is basically our catalog for all the views that are available in JavaFX. From here we can just drag and drop all the elements onto our anchor pane. However, so far it doesn't have any size. If we look then in the document section, it consists of a hierarchy area and a controller area. The hierarchy area shows all the elements that are currently on our view. So far it's just the anchor pane. But in the hierarchy area we can also see the relationships between different views. I'll show more details about that in the next video. One actually very important area is this controller area. It is easily overseen but is at least for one thing very important. And this is to connect to the controller class out of the view. So remember in the last video we connected to the controller class from the main class. In here we connect from the view to the controller. I'll demonstrate that in the next video. Let's select the anchor pane and have a look on the right side. The right side consists of the properties area, the layout area and the code area. In the properties area we can edit many settings specific to each node. So this area looks differently depending on what node you have selected. Underneath we have a style area. In a much later video I will tell you how to style our application with CSS. And then we have some extras that are not always available for each node. In the layout section we can define the size and dimensions as well as the position of our node. The code section provides a number of very important callbacks that we can use in our application for each element. On the very top we have an ID field where we can define a unique ID for each element in our application. With this ID we can later on in our controller class call these elements. So the callback methods are very interesting. There are also different categories. First we have the drag and drop area then the keyboard or mouse events. And here are some furthermore. So what are these callback methods? We can implement some of them in our application and we can define method that will be called when certain events happen. So for example, we can define a mouse over event. When we drag with the mouse over a certain element, we can call a method. The same is when we click an element or we click a specific key. These methods give us a lot of flexibility to create the behavior of our program. So in the next video we actually create our first view. 